A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm loving all the social media comments that are coming through so far. Loving seeing the photos that are being posted, all the love you're sharing for our guests in the loft today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And there's another way for us to say thank you to you on the show. We make delicious food. And Grindig recently hosted 10 lucky viewers, you at home, to a private dinner hosted at the East Coast Radio Garden and Home Show. And the amazing culinary experience was led by our very own Afternoon Express's Clem Pedro, who treated the guests to a seared lamb sirloin in a curried sauce. How yum does that sound? He followed all of that up by a delicious chocolate fondant pudding with salted caramel sauce. And so we thought the best way to treat you today would be to recreate that in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I got you to help me. Great, I'm excited. I've never actually made a fondant before. Mine are always either too crunchy or they're just liquid. All right, so today we're going to get it right. Perfect. Correct. Okay. So we're going to start with this. I've got some chocolate. I've got some butter that I just heated over a double boiler, which is simply a pot with some water in the bottom. And like on a very gentle simmer, all you need to do is let that rest there until everything melts and comes together. Lovely. Lovely. Very simple. Very, very simple. Fondant is actually a very simple recipe. Don't say that now, Clem. It's very simple. He Basically, always says this. Chefs always say this, and it's never true. So just show us how, to, how difficult it is, and it will grow, and we'll be better chefs for it. All right. So very simple ingredients. You've got butter and chocolate. Mm -hmm. And then you need some eggs and you need some flour. Okay. And basically that's it. Basics. So four ingredients. So what, what, what went wrong? Oh, what went wrong? It was just my skill set. I'm just too lazy. My okay. thing is I'm impatient in the kitchen. I want to get it done and I want to get it done now. So this right. waiting and cool. slowly, but no. Mm -hmm. But I need your help though. So you're going to come cool. to the side over here. So if you want, in case you're wondering what the bottle's for, I need to separate some eggs. Okay. So the cool trick is that? you actually use a bottle. Do you suck the yolk out? Yes. Really? Can okay, I try? Cool. So are you ready? Do yeah. this nice and slowly. Which okay. one? This one, yeah. No, 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 other one. See, These ones. Ah, oh, damn. What's wrong? Are those that already ball. the yolks? Okay, yep, so suck the yolk out. Oh my God. Oh. Keep it there, keep it there, keep it there, keep it there. I got oh. it, I got it, I got oh. it. I got it. <laughs> I got Into the ball. Into that the ball so we got. Hilarious. That's so okay, cool. Need the other two as well. Okay. okay, this is so much fun, guys. Honestly, this is the best. You need to tip it, tip it, tip it. That's fine. I'll yeah. take that. I'll most, take that. You'll take it? Yeah. Give yeah. me a little bit yeah. of white. There we go. Okay, this is the most fun I've had in, in know, a while. It's so crazy. And I'm standing here waiting for you, like something to happen. Okay, it you got it. It feels so cool. You're like, so you're fishing right now. Yeah. Cool. This is awesome. How easy is that, though? It's actually such a cool trick. Recycle your bottles, kids. Recycle, Recycle bottle. those bottles. All right, cool. So now you're going to kind of scramble the eggs and start pouring it into our butter and chocolate mixture. So you meant it by kind of scramble those eggs. So you kind scramble of. them in the chocolate. You don't need to do it completely. You just want to kind of get them mm -hmm. kind of broken up a bit. Cool. So you can already see it starting to thicken, right? Yes, I can. And then my trick at this stage is a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That brings out all the sweetness. And the flavor of the chocolate. Cool. So you can use dark chocolate like we're using today. You can mix it up to a little mm -hmm. bit of dark, a little bit of milk. I like dark chocolate, it's quite rich. I don't particularly like it, it makes it bitter. And I want, if I want dessert, I want to indulge yes. in the sweet. So, okay, so you but know this what? is healthier, I get it. And well, all that. Also, we're not adding any sugar to the actual dessert itself because I've made a salted caramel oh, for someone wow. like you that doesn't like the bitter flavor oh, of dark chocolate. Did you really make this? I did. Can I taste it? You can, there's a little spoon for you. Mm. I love salted caramel, it's one of my favorite things in the whole world. What do you like? What do you think? What do you think? Oh, yum. Okay, mm. cool. But now let's it's get like, back to it. It tastes almost like honey. Yeah. Wow, that's delicious. And I made it quite runny because you want it to be nice and runny so you can pour it over mm. your, your dessert. Well, I'm done here. Bye. No, I'm well, no, I need your help. So here we go. Four ingredients that are in here now, excluding the salt. Okay, so you've got their butter, you've got their chocolate, you've got mm -hmm. egg, egg, egg yolks, Eggs. and now you're adding flour. Yeah, there we go. So it's all mixed through together. A nice one with this one, the batter can actually stay out for three days without being in the fridge. Lovely. Yeah. So batter is better. When it's... Or yeah. butter is better. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. Now, right. now they're competing right. for each other. <laughs> Okay. So what I've got over here is I've got some ramekin molds that I've just dusted with a little bit of cocoa okay. so, they don't, so the batter doesn't stick to it when you turn it out, if Love you want to turn idea. it out. Mm -hmm. So all I want to ask you to do now, Dan, mm -hmm. is, there you go, I've got two spoons for you. You can just add a little bit. Actually, let me do it for you real quick because I've got another yeah. job for you. You can make this done quickly because I'm going to take forever for this thing. And I know you guys at home are like, just show me the fondant. All right, so you're going to fill up all these little individual ramekins and you pop it into the oven. But however, because we like, we're a family, right? Mm -hmm. So I made one big one. Oh, yeah. Take it like that. Wow. And it is a little, um, little runny in the looks center. A, oh, it looks a bit crunchy on the outside. Oh, no, man, So just runny in the middle. It's, it is runny in the middle. Just checking. So here we go. Some ice cream. Dad, you can get ready with your salted caramel. Sure. I'm just going to top the ice cream over the pudding. And I can just drizzle this over. You're going to just drizzle over. Oh, I don't even need a spoon for this. You don't need. This and is I've got my some, favorite. I've got some extra caramel on the table as well, in case you don't Ooh. have enough. 
Oh yeah. I don't know. You see How much was I put? I'm pretty sure Sia's on a Listen, easy I'm, I'm right hearing now. sounds come from offset here <laughs> that I'm a bit nervous about. Sia and uh, Rachel are making some interesting sounds. They sound like they are excited for this. I'm Yum. excited to. Is that enough? Just go for it. Yes. Listen, there's so much sweetness, decadence in this fondant that we've made on the show today. So if you want all the details on your mobile device, you SMS the keyword "sweet" to double three six five zero. It'll cost you one and fifty, and your free SMSs don't apply. And voila, this could be dessert this evening. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, us? Why don't you go take it to the guests? Ah. Oh. I don't even want to take this to the guests. I don't want to take this to you guys. I'm sorry. I love you all, but uh, ta -da. that looks delicious. Oh, Amazing. Oh my gosh, so decadent. See, so, yeah, you can dish up, dude. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Serve you, your wife. Do, does the baby kick every time you eat some sugar? I, this baby is a little bit excited about everything, but right now she's like, yes. Yes, sugar. This is what I want. I'm so <laughs> excited for you too. Listen, who cooks at home? Yeah. Yes, babe, who cooks at home? She does. Aww. <laughs> but it does every now and then. What is your favorite dish to make? Leg of lamb. Oh, yum. Ooh, yummy. She's one of those slow roast kind of guys. Like, I'm one of those instants. Absolutely. Give to Bonnie. She's but the best. But <laughs> We've had some amazing comments coming through, warm hearted comments of support um, for our lovely couple. And Nicholas Leonard so says, smart. Sia, one of my favorite rugby players. Awesome to see you and your wife standing strong. A true vision and image of love. I've always believed the only race there should be is the human race. I mean, after all, we're all the same colors underneath our skin. Oh, beautiful. So it's nice to see positive comments come through, but I've also seen a lot of people who are very negative about the space. I'm so dying to understand the difference between my choice and what is objectively speaking something that is racist. I still can't figure that out. I know a lot of white friends of mine who say like, oh, I've never, I've never kissed like a black girl. I've you know, never found myself attracted to somebody of, of another race. And I still don't understand where that line is drawn between I mean, racism and preference. Right, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with preference. Right. I just think that if you meet another human being, another soul that you connect with, and you do fall in love with them, and then you decide you can't be with them because mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're a different race from you, I think then you're Then you know that line is clear. Yeah, yeah. then mm -hmm. you're conditioned in ways that are affecting your, your present decision. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of it has to do with conditioning. If you're conditioned um, growing up that you shouldn't date yeah. people who look yeah. like that yeah. or yeah. people who look like that are inferior to you, then... Yeah. Yeah. So, so what Advice. How do we all self-reflect? Like, how do we self-reflect as people, as individuals who might not recognize the racist tendencies we may have internally, based on our upbringings, based on all that stuff, which is not objective, it's not, uh, yeah. it's not overt, yeah. but it's subtleties that when you look at ourselves. How do we go about thinking yeah. about that stuff? How do we reflect on it? I think just to be like open-minded and to just open your eyes to things. So, th you know, th there's a lot of stuff also that I used to say, like racial slurs and stuff that I didn't think were an issue. And then, mm. you know, we obviously have people that said like, hey, yes. that's actually, and I actually went out of my way to go and educate myself more, because obviously I'm raising two black kids and my son mm. is colored and I'm married mm. to a black man. So I went out of sure. my way to go and research more and just to open my mind to everything mm. and mm. Pe people's opinions. So not to stand there and be like, Oh, they're always complaining that you know this one is saying this and this one is saying this and I just decided you know what I need to understand why does it affect people so much and just went out of my way to just try and to try get on the other side of it and just understand like mm. and my view has opened up so much more so to much. a lot of yeah. things yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's been amazing so and obviously, sorry, obviously being in an interracial relationship um, it opens you up to more discussion mm -hmm. about, about race yeah. issues and it's an ongoing conversation in your home, I can imagine. Um, and the other thing I mentioned earlier is, I mean, I, I walk down the street with my bae and you, you see some people are looking at you because you're an interracial mm -hmm. couple and they just stare and it's mm -hmm. uncomfortable mm -hmm. and awkward. But a lot of the time, they, they, people do look at you with fascination mm -hmm. and there's almost an, an awe of and uh, in awe of the idea that could I be that free yeah. um, ah, almost yeah. like an envy like yeah. could I have that much freedom in my life yeah. to yeah. make that kind of a choice and yeah. what yeah. Must, what what does that look like for me yeah. Yeah. so it's also inspiring on yeah. Yeah. Level. Yeah. Yeah. so see what are your thoughts around this because one thing that I I know you at home are probably thinking something very similar about these things you, you mentioned yeah. this now about experiencing other people's viewpoints and worldviews a lot of mm -hmm. people say like oh no I don't like this person because you don't share the same culture yeah we're very culturally different and therefore we couldn't be together how does one go about experiencing Experiencing other cultures, how do you, how how invested should we be in experiencing cultures of people that are different to us? Yeah, I country? think it's. The, I think that that's where it all starts. It makes us a better country at the end of the day for you understanding mm. someone else's culture. For me, coming from the township and then going to an English school was obviously a huge cultural shock mm. for me. And you know, I accepted it and I took it in my stride and do something different, like. Small stuff like learning what there's a time out when the township can sleep whenever I want and all that kind of stuff. And 
they're using knife and fork, like small stuff like that. They start off, I started slowly like that for me, but now I'm always willing to learn about something else. You gotta yeah. know the person themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't judge a big group of yes. people. Just know the individual and make time for the one person, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we can get better in each other day. If you, like, if you're speaking about work and stuff, know the guy, take, take your time, take him for coffee, speak to him at lunchtime. That's what I do with my mm -hmm. rugby teammates, because mm -hmm. obviously, Rugby, it's, diverse, diverse, it's very yeah. diverse now, and our team here this is almost it's very diverse. I take a moment and I get to know the guy next to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you'll get to know the person better. You might not, not like them, but now you'll know why mm -hmm. they do certain things. Yeah. Then you'll play for them more, and you'll work better with them at work as well, and you feel more yeah. comfortable. You don't feel so threatened by it. It feels yeah. like, I now understand yeah. it, so I can, I can be more sympathetic yeah. and empathetic to, to the circumstances. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. And also, I think it's important to note that it, it also is racist to say to someone, you're not like the other blacks. I like yeah. you because you're, oh, like wow. yeah, you're not like oh, the other blacks. You're not like the others. Oh, you're a good black. Uh, yes. Oh, you're such wow. a good yeah. black guy. So I think um, yeah. stuff like Listen, that, people need to be aware. I think this race conversation got you at all home, like on your social media accounts, going crazy <laughs> and are having lots of the chats. But a quick little comment from you two. Please tell me, do you have a name for the little girl? Oh, no. Have you named her yet? We open to any names. Yeah. Oh, name <laughs> suggestions, send them through. Shaniqua. <laughs> Shaniqua. <laughs> Shaniqua. <laughs> We're so excited for you two to be parents one more time. I mean, to welcome your fourth child. I mean, it's going to be really beautiful to see the way that you guys have treated your yeah. kids. You're going to inspire their generations and generations after that. So thank you for coming to join us and being so open about your relationship and continue to take those haters out on social media. We love yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I laugh all the time. It's great. Tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we're sitting down with the new Mr. South Africa, Hlingi Wetwala. She'll be giving us some insider pageant tips. Oh, it's going to be a cool show tomorrow. You're going to love those too. pageant tips, huh? Oh, yeah, obviously, you know me. I strap my stuff. It's one thing I do not know how to do. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. We've loved having you with us. And thank you so much for visiting us today and sharing your story. Mm, yeah. Please keep yeah. the conversations happening at home with your families, with your friends. Uh, it's a really important conversation to be had. Hashtag Afternoon Express. We'd love to hear all your comments come through. Have a good night and happy eating. Happy eating. This is so delicious.